In 4th of November 2016, Selahattin Demirtas was detained in the Turkish F-type prison of Edirne. Demirtas is described as the only hope for democracy in Turkey and among Kurds. Selahattin is seen as an unafraid role model and a great leader. But what is Demirtas' story and will he ever be released? Before we start this video, don't forget to like it, comment your opinion down below and don't forget to subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss any further content on this channel. Also consider becoming a member in our community by checking out our Patreon page. Whenever a video is ready, you will get a personal link where you can access our documentaries 3 days before everybody else. You will also get the chance to affect the direction that this channel goes and which documentaries we do. Link to our Patreon account will be in the description box below. Now, without further ado, let's get into the video. Selahattin Demirtas was born in the city of Elazir in Turkish-occupied Kurdistan. The city is originally an Armenian town, which as a result of the Armenian genocide nowadays has a dominant Kurdish population, mostly Zaza Kurds. Demirtas himself was born into a Zaza family. He grew up relatively good and were not involved into any political environment until one special occasion. According to Demirtas himself, it was during the funeral of Vedat Aydin as his life changed drastically. Vedat Aydin were a Kurdish politician who were kidnapped by Jitem, the counter-terrorist forces of Turkey. However, don't let the name fool you, Jitem has throughout the years committed several crimes against human rights not at least the killing of Aydin himself, a very peaceful politician in a dangerous Turkish society. Two days after the kidnapping, Aydin were found dead. In the upcoming funeral, Demirtas realized the importance of the struggle. This was not a question of political thoughts, this was a question of human rights and the rights of existence. In an interview in October 2015 with The Guardian, Demirtas explains, I became a different person. My life course changed. Although I didn't fully understand why this happened, I knew it had to do with the fact that we were Kurds. Since that wasn't an identity I would toss away, it simply became my problem. Upon this life-changing moment, Selahattin finished school but were unable to graduate from college due to his political views. He then returned to Ahmed where he worked as a lawyer for a few years. During his first time as a lawyer, Demirtas dedicated some time and became a member of human rights associations in Turkey. Within time, Demirtas was voted into becoming the head chair of the organization. Among their most important questions were to lower the gaps between different ethnicities in Turkey, but also to solve all unsolved political murders. Demirtas' political career started in 2007 when he became a member of the Democratic Society Party one of the few established Kurdish parties in Turkey. Within time he found himself a good spot within the party and out of thousands he was elected into the parliament. At the age of 34 he was elected to be the parliament chief officer of the party. However, the party was closed down by the Turkish Supreme Court in 2009 and most of the party's representatives moved into a similar party called the Peace and Democracy Party BDP. In 2010, the BDP elected Selatin Demirtas as one of two leaders of the party. Demirtas continued his career within BDP during the peace process and negotiations between Turkey and the PKK. However, in 2014 the party of BDP was dissolved and a new party was created called the HDP, People's Democratic Party. Demirtas focused on the upcoming elections and were trying to get votes from Kurds, left-wings and other oppressed minorities such as homosexuals and political enemies of the Erdogan regime. The first elections in 2014, the presidential election of Turkey, became a success and HDP got 9.77% of the votes. One year later it was time for the general elections and here Demirtas claimed another great success as HDP claimed 13.2% of the votes. Becoming the fourth biggest party of Turkey, this was a great record for the Kurdish party in Turkey, claiming 80 out of 550 seats. 
the result of the election was a big obstacle against Erdogan's plans of extending his role as Turkey's leader, where he needed and hoped for an own majority. Even though HDP for a long time had been persecuted as a party, the treatment of the party became much worse now. Hundreds of politicians were arrested and people was bombed as Erdogan used the PKK conflict to start a witch hunt against both the HDP and the PKK. On November 4th, 2016, Selahattin Demirtas was arrested. During his arrest, he stated that he was neither a manager, a member, a spokesperson or a sympathizer of the PKK. In January 18th, 2017, Turkish prosecutors announced that they were seeking a 132 years prison sentence for Demirtas. Many politicians in the international community have shown their solidarity with Demirtas, but there is also a big big group of people that are too quiet, mostly due to their important relations the country have with Turkey, which means that they are selling out democracy, freedom of speech and freedom overall. So now to the question, will Demirtas ever be released? Well, our answer is that it simply depends. Let's take a look at two factors here. The first one is what we mentioned earlier in the video, where Turkish prosecutors announced their 132 years prison sentence charge for Demirtas. Now, with a sentence like this, Demirtas would sit in jail for the rest of his life, so the Turkish juridical is not on Demirtas' side here. Let's also look at where Demirtas is sitting imprisoned. It is the Eftai prison in Edirne. Now, just by reading about this type of prison, we can see what this F-type prison is described as. It says that the F-type prison is a high security prison designed by the Turkish law 5275 on the execution of sentences. Further on, it says that the prison is built for those sentenced to a so-called aggravated life imprisonment and that the aggravated life imprisonment replaced the death penalty when it was abolished in 2002. What we now can conclude is that Demirtas is maintained in a prison for life sentenced prisoners. If you look at history, we can see that last time a very popular Kurdish leader was released was when Abdullah Öcalan was released from his first visit in Turkish prison in 1974, as Bülent Ecevic and his voting campaign promised to release prisoners that had been jailed in previous Turkish aggressions. Basically, Demirtas will not be released as long as Erdogan is in power. He might be released if another leader takes the power, but not even in that case, it is sure enough to confidentially claim that Demirtas ever will see freedom again. What do you think? Do you believe that Demirtas will be free? Let us know in the comment section below and don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification button so that you don't miss any further videos on this channel.